Aero Video brings to 4K, HDR, UHD, and Blu-ray the 1995 thriller Mute Witness. Now, I first saw this on tape when it first hit video in probably 95, 96, whenever that was from uh, Columbia TriStar Home Video. Probably would have been at that point. And I remember liking it. It got a lot of talk at the time in all the movie magazines. Everybody was talking about Mute Witness. And when I rented it, I remember thinking it was decent, but not anything, you know, spectacular. That was a pan and scan videotape. Seeing this for the first time in proper widescreen and in 4K, and the Blu-ray looks outstanding too. The 4K and the Blu-ray, to get that out of the way, not that there was any doubt with Arrow, they look amazing. To see uh, Anthony Waller's film starring uh, Marina Zudina as the titular mute witness, to see this the way it's supposed to look, this is a really good movie. This is easily one of the best thrillers or horror films of the 90s that nobody talks about. This seems to have been forgotten. Hopefully this release will get it back in front of people and get it back in people's hands. It's uh, presented with optional English SDH subtitles, but the whole film is in English. Basic story goes a little something like this. I'm not gonna tell you the whole story. Film crew shooting in Russia, shooting a horror movie in Russia, shuts down for the day. This woman who's a mute, who is, uh, I, I can't remember what she, what role she plays on the crew, but she's either like the script supervisor or special effects department or, or makeup or something like that. She's like, oh, I forgot my MacGuffin back in the studio. I'll be right back. She goes in, finds herself locked in, trying to figure out a way out. Not a tragedy, just like, uh, how do I get out of this rusty old place that apparently they just flipped the big old Frankenstein switch at the end of the day and that's that. And she sees people she maybe recognizes from working on the crew in there and they are shooting an adult film on the set and she kind of giggles like oh they're they're making double use of these sets and the cameras and then she realizes they are creating a snuff film if you don't know what a snuff film is the notion behind a snuff film is that it is filming somebody being murdered who somebody who thinks they are being in some sort of a film not knowing how that film is going to end, which would be also the end of them. So she witnesses this. She tries to back away. Something happens. They whip their heads around and see that there is a witness, a mute witness, if you will, to this crime. And then the rest of the movie is a cat and mouse game. This is so good. This very much feels like, I would say Hitchcockian, but it really feels more De Palmian. This feels like a Brian De Palma. And if you know what I mean by that, it's very bombastic. It's very over the top. It's very, you know big score and big camera movies and bug eyes and you know very well shot and executed and it's just solid it's really good i will say um it does at one point introduce a couple of other characters that are related to our mute witness some of that gets a little silly i think it's intended to be comic relief or else this movie would be just so unrelentingly grim that doesn't work as well for me and the the male actor of that duo i found to be a little cheesy but that does not detract enough from the rest of this movie to really even warrant it being a demerit. It is so amazing and, in retrospect now, refreshing to see maybe the tail end of the period in cinema where you could have a thriller like this that takes place in dark areas and dark places and not have it be this unwatchable mess of impenetrable darkness that you can't see what's going on and shaky camera and poor editing. This is an expertly crafted film. It looks so good. Not that it takes you out of it. It's just that you can see what's going on and you can be drawn into the story because you can visually comprehend what's going on. That occurred to me part the way, part way through. I'm like, wow, she's in a place that really is, she isn't really illuminated very much. It's not like she's on the surface of the sun, but you know, it's lit enough for us to see what's going on and, and get that it's dark. We don't have to not be able to see to know that she can't be see very well. So very, very good film. Um, it was it uses the the lang the language and culture barrier to put our heroes in sort of a, a weird situation where she feels even more isolated beyond the fact that she can't speak is that there's this language barrier. She doesn't know what people are saying to each other. It's uh, It really plays up the sort of xenophobic thing of lawless Russia and, you know, life is cheap there and there's no law and their rules and their morals or who knows what they are. And it's just it's this horrible place. Uh, there's a guest star in this film. Not going to tell you who it is. There's a guest star in this film that this was one of the things that was talked about a lot when it came out because apparently the director had the opportunity to shoot a scene with a very famous actor 
a decade almost before this movie came out. He knew he was eventually going to make this movie, but not what the story would be. So he shot a scene with this actor who was available for an incredibly short window of time in like a parking garage of a hotel, knowing he would work it into a film later. And so by the time this movie came out, this actor was already dead. So it was a huge surprise that if you didn't know at the time, you're watching the film and you're like, what? what? How did he show up? Didn't he die like years ago? Uh, so that's a really kind of fun anecdote or footnote in the film. They really get into that in the extras. The extras on this are great. Um, did I have anything? Uh, sorry, referring to my notes here as, as the air conditioning doesn't work. Uh, it's got a lot of twists. It's uh, It keeps you guessing right up until almost the very last minute of the film. It's so cat and mouse playful. So in that realm, Hitchcockian or De Palmian, you know, right on the button there. Um, Special features, commentary by the director, crew commentary with the production designer and composer moderated by the late, sadly now late critic Lee Gambin, which is a new, is a new commentary. Some of the stuff I think is might, might be a little older, I'm not sure. Um, actually, there is some of the stuff that's older. I think most of this is new for the film, for this Arrow release of this film. Uh, extra called The Silent Death, which is a visual essay by Alexandra Heller Nicholas examining Mute Witness and its relationship with the world of snuff films. That's 12 minutes. The Wizard Behind the Curtains visual essay by author Chris Alexander that explores the film, the idea of a film within a film, because this movie does that in, at one point, uh, within in Mute Witness as a whole. That's 23 minutes. Snuff movie presentation. Originally, this was called Snuff Movie. And there is this half hour video presentation taken from an old probably PAL videotape converted that is all of the production team talking about making this movie and what they want. This might have even been done before the movie was finished or there, no, I'm sorry. Uh, it was to generate interest in investors and distributors. So they, I don't know that they had the full film at that point or if they had the release film ready to go, but it's talking about how this film is sellable and why it's interesting and what they're going to do with it. And that's just a, a fascinating glimpse into something that nobody ever saw out in the general public or, or film fans unless they found a bootleg of it. Uh, location scouting footage. This is raw camcorder footage from when they were going to set the film in the US in Boston. So it's scouting footage from Boston and on videotape from like sometime in the 80s, I think. That's seven minutes. Um, I'm not gonna say the name. If you buy this, you'll know who it is. If you've seen it, you know who it is. But all the original footage shot with that secret guest star I was talking about, it's three minutes and it's just the slate to slate, the raw footage they shot. So it's him doing a couple takes and talking and that's interesting. Uh, trailer, two minutes. Teaser trailer, one minute, red band teaser. And a seven image image gallery. This is a really good movie. I hope you haven't heard of it and I hope you've just heard of it and I hope you go see this. Whether you buy the Arrow edition, which I would recommend, I don't know that this is streaming anywhere, I'm not sure, but this is available in separate 4K and Blu-ray sets, I believe. If you buy the 4K, Arrow almost always includes the Blu-ray as well. I would recommend that because more and more as we go along, to quote my favorite Monkey song, uh, TVs are going to just be 4K TVs. It's just like Blu-ray player, maybe you can still buy a DVD player, but eventually you just buy a Blu-ray player and it'll play all the old stuff. That's what it's going to be like. Eventually you're going to get a new player. And hopefully you still support physical media because that's the only way to know you'll be going to be able to watch anything down the line. I always say get the 4K edition if it comes with a Blu-ray. If you don't have a 4K player or a TV, you might one day and hey, what do you know? Now you got a 4K player. And if you don't currently have that, you just use the Blu-ray. Available on Blu-ray and 4K from Arrow Home Video is Mute Witness.